Uh, I think that one of the things we need to realize uh, as a citizenry, as the little people, is that the big people, the guys that are running the governments, the one percenters, the private corporations and the, and the, the private foundations, they are not interested in us at all. They don't care whether we starve to death. So we have to take matters into our own hands. We learn to need to learn how to grow gardens, keep animals. I know it sounds kind of ridiculous that you might keep animals in the city, but many cities are now allowing people to have chickens. You can grow vegetables in an apartment. Just Google bottle wall garden. There are people that have made gardens that hang on the walls of their apartments. They put dirt in these empty two-liter pop bottles, and they grow veggies. It's amazing. But, you know, one of the things I did with my book was I put in a little survival guide at the back because during the last cold spell, 71 to 75, I was living in a log cabin up in the Rockies. And I'm telling you, it got really cold. Uh, I didn't have any money. I grew uh, most of my own food, and I learned how to live with 20, 30, 40 below. And that's what we're going to be doing. So it's important to try to survive, to figure ways around the government. These people are not there to help us, not at all. I don't want to sound like conspiracy theorists, but there's got to be some kind of a conspiracy when the temperature record is being altered and they're lying to us about it. They get caught. They keep lying. Right now, there's a... Um, a representative from the state of Texas, a guy named Lamar Smith, who is investigating NOAA for altering these temperature records. And, of course, they don't answer his letters. They, they refuse to cooperate. It's standard routine these days. So it's important to spend your money on stuff other than new kitchens, new vacations, new cars. Get out of debt. If you don't get out of debt, you will be swallowed when uh, the food prices go up 10, 15, 20%. How are you going to buy food? What an awful come down for people that were successful that North America was the breadbasket of the world. We're not going to be exporting as much wheat either, so look for unrest in those places that are buying our food. And that is mainly the Middle East and North Africa. Those guys Populations have been growing exponentially, while the dictators that run those countries continue to use oil money and diamond money and whatever money they've got to buy more grain, keep the people happy. Egypt had bread riots here two or three years ago. There were corn riots. Uh, the corn prices went sky high in some places a few years ago because Americans were turning corn into fuel for their cars. Another great green idea. Let's starve people so we can run our SUVs. You know, they keep saying, get self-sufficient, live off, you know, get green, get self-sufficient. And then there's been an enormous ramp up, I must say. Uh, Natural News always follows these stories more than any site that I've seen. The police keep coming in and raiding natural milk farmers. So if you have raw, unprocessed milk, non-pasteurized that you're either selling or using yourself with your cattle on your land or it might even be goats. The federal government's coming in and taking over, arresting these people and then slaughtering their animals. And then in other instances, when local farmers start to get so good that they're producing uh, well enough where they can sell into the farmer's market and supply restaurants, they're, they're coming and they're closed down as well. And it makes no sense to me. They should be using these people as community leaders and examples to teach other people how to grow food, but uh, this is the federal government comes in with federal police officers to shut them down. It's not local. Local assists the federal to come in and shut down these farmers, and I really, that's something I don't understand either. It's, yeah, they want us to starve on purpose because there's got to be some other ploy why, there's, why currently there's a huge push to shut down all the small farms. Yeah, well, not only that, but uh, they're regulating wood stoves. They're now saying, no, that wood stove you and your family have used for the last 30 years is not good enough. You have to have a new EPA-approved wood stove, and that'll set you back two grand. 
So if you don't have that EPA-approved wood stove, you can't burn wood. And the license with it. I heard you had to also apply for a license, which is 400 U.S. as well per year. The license on top of the conversion kit, yes. Oh, my God, it's terrible. So um, people have been getting by, historically, about uh, 15% of heat is generated by wood, by burning wood. And it's, it's actually more than nuclear power. So they're going to shut down the wood stoves to try to force people to uh, convert to something else. But there's a lot of people going to have to break the law to stay warm. They're going to have to break the law to grow organic vegetables. The regulations keep piling on. The American U.S. federal government has written so many regulations for daily life. It's, it's absurd. And we have the same problem in Canada. Uh, we have a liberal government in Ottawa that keeps making more rules, keeps spending our tax money on something other than helping the people. It's mind-numbing. So when it does come down to this time where it's going to be obvious through all the forecasts I've read, almost everything from 45 degrees north latitude up to the Arctic Circle, everywhere in that band that's currently growing any types of crops, and mainly wheat at 45 north and above 50 north, 55 north, 60 north. Anything above 45 north is going to be totally offline. And when we talk about yeah. the number of millions of tons of grain that that's going to affect, the shorter oh, yeah. the growing seasons are going to get shorter, other crops are going to be affected, food growing zones are going to need to be shifting 150 miles south. When it gets to this point, you know, the things you just are talking about with all these regulations, I don't know how those two are going to really mix. It seems like an oil and a water kind of scenario. Yes, well, I talk about that in my book, A New Little Ice Age Has Started. The growth, uh, the areas of the planet that have been uh, growing the bulk of our food includes most of Canada. The, the amount of grain, we produce millions of tons of grain every year that's shipped out of the country, uh, shipped to the third world. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the third world, but I sure wouldn't want to be there, I'll tell you that. It's going to be a slow thing, but you've got globalists running various countries, and they're opening the doors. They're letting people come in. Whoever wants to come into Germany, for example, can just walk in. The same thing's happening on America's southern border. Whoever wants to come in can just swim the Rio Grande and you're in. And that is a globalist concept. We homogenize the people. We stir everybody, mix everybody in together, and then there will be less resistance to the idea of a one-world government. So the American people have a chance to do something about this, just like Britain did with Brexit. They had a chance to do something. They acted. This fall... November uh, is a chance for the American people to say, no, we don't want to be homogenized. We don't want to turn over our rights and keep following the regulations. And We don't want more rules. We want more freedom. Now's the time to act on that. Yeah, that brings you right into Agenda 21 and now Agenda 30, 2030. Trying to get this area where it's all UN controlled, where it's a non habitation zone for humans to be into. What part of that's also going to be a food growing area that we're going to be, as a UN serves kicked out of our own country's land, out of those own zones that could be used for food growing when we're really at the depth of this grand solar minimum? Because as you stated in the book, you know, we're looking around 2030 at the one that's going to be exceptionally cold, and we're not going to be coming out of that for some time. So when they're going to start to try to regulate what parts of land you can live on in which country, that's going to involve food growing areas too. And right there, I can already see a sticking point of somebody's not going to want to leave. You're, you're correct about that. The UN has already made lots of pronouncements about <clears throat> how we should be getting rid of uh, meat and milk in our diets because it takes a lot of land and global warming is going to be impacted by all those cow farts. Did you know, for example, that California has just regulated cow farts? That's right. Farmers have got to figure out how to keep their cows from farting. Well, I don't know how they're going to do it, but that's what the Californians think is a good idea. But the U.S. is pushing an alternative form of nutrition. 
bugs. They want us to eat bugs. So we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be fenced out of the good farmland one way or another, and we're going to have to eat bugs. So that's what we're headed for. Larry, did you ever watch this movie called Snowpiercer? Have you seen that one? No, no I haven't. Oh, it's an absolute must. Just what you just touched on is, it's this long train that contains all of humanity. There was some disaster, and this, and you know what's really quirky, is the inventor of the train and the person who laid down all the tracks, similar like an Elon Musk type of person who had all the grand ideas for, you know, different types of things and modes of transportation in society to save humanity. They saw a global cooling trend coming, so they loaded everybody onto this specialized train, and at the very end of the train, where the people that had to go to work every day, and then the middle part of the train were the musicians and the teachers, and then the front and the first class area was all the, I don't know, the one percenters if you want to call them that. But at the end of the train, you know what they had to eat every day? They were given these cubes, uh, some kind of protein cube, but it was ground up insects that were prepared a little bit further up the chain in the car. No kidding. Snowpiercer. Oh boy. Movie, it'll shock you. 